Today I want to take a look at modern communication sites and how to widen the default section. So web part zones in previous versions of SharePoint, now known as sections in the modern layout, sometimes have a gutter or a margin or blank white space on the edges. If we come into edit mode of the communication homepage, you'll notice that these sections in the center have a very large blank white space on each side. And part of what Microsoft has done to address this is the component at the top known as a vertical section. So up here we have the full width section. And when we add a full width section, there's a limited menu of web parts. There's only three available. That's not very much to work with. Whereas you come into a standard section, you get the full menu of all kinds of great stuff to pick from. So the question is, how do we get this full menu of all of our web parts, but also maintain usage of this blank space? You know, in a default section, we're having this blank space, not able to use it. But then in the full width section, we only have three web parts, which is not very compelling. There's other content we'd like to put there. So how do you get the best of both worlds? It can be done, and the method is to add a little bit of CSS to take away this buffer and widen the default section so that it can use the full screen real estate available. So in this video, we'll walk through how to do that, and it involves a couple of steps. One is adding a site level app catalog using PMP. The second is putting a modern content editor on the home page. And then the third is adding CSS to the modern content editor so that we can widen the zone. And just to jump right to the point and show you guys the CSS, this is the good stuff here that will go ahead and widen that default section, that default web part zone. So if the default section can be wider and make better use of the screen real estate, we can show more content to our users, we can prevent vertical scrolling, and make better use of this blank space than simply giving people a white area on their screens. So we want to widen the default section, make use of the blank space. We can do that with CSS. How do we put the CSS on the page? Well, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and take the URL, bring it over to command line, and do a very simple connect PMP online with the URL itself that we are given. And for this, I'm going to do use web login. It will likely give an authentication pop-up window. Go ahead and put in your username and password. Once you have a session, you can type in get PMP web to confirm that it connected to the site that you're expecting. We have a successful connection. Now that we're connected, we want to go ahead and add a catalog. There is a command for doing that. It's the add PMP site collection app catalog. And the parameter will bring in the URL of the site. Go ahead and execute that command. It came through with no error. If we go to the site itself and we come into the site contents, what you'll notice is a new line item, apps for SharePoint. Inside of this, we're going to upload the modern content editor web part. With the modern content editor uploaded, we can go ahead and click the deploy button to finish. And if we navigate back to the site itself, we'll do new app, modern content editor with the add button. You'll see it changed to the word adding. We'll get a confirmation that it added successfully. And we now see the web part appearing on the site contents page with an app for the type. So that's how we know we've added the modern content editor. Now to use it, we're going to come into the home page. We're going to take away the full width section, remove it from the site. And here we're going to add a modern content editor. We'll modify to look at the code. You have two options, you can do a link or bring the code direct. We're gonna go ahead and do the direct coding for this one. We're gonna put in some CSS selectors for the canvas section. 
first child, margin, max width, padding zero. So what we're doing here, just to get into the code a little more specifically, we're taking the padding to zero, margin to zero, max width 100. And all of these are tagged as important, so they cannot be overwritten. This web part lives at the top of the page. So from a scrolling perspective, it's at the top in regards to the vertical scroll so that it will load as soon as the page comes into sight, no delay. You put it at the bottom, you'll end up with bugs because you have to scroll down for it to take effect. Now, with that added to our site, what you'll immediately notice is that the margin has now become razor thin on both sides. And we have this huge viewing area. This is what makes for happy users and effective websites. We reduce our vertical scrolling. We can present more data to people at one time. And you know, it actually makes it pretty compelling to start using the three column section. And honestly, if they offered a four column section, I'd probably use that too. Because with the CSS in place, you now have the ability to use all of this extra space and widen out the display. So if you take a look right now at the way the news web part is rendered in this two column and these huge amounts of unused space on both sides, that's what it looks like in edit mode. We'll go ahead and take this and publish. So now we're out of edit mode and now look at the news web part. It's using up all of this real estate with a very tiny margin on the edge. And that's how we make an effective display in a modern communication site using a little bit of CSS. Thanks for watching.